Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to build a sound absorption panel for your home studio and I'm going to do it the quick simple way, um, easy materials, may not be the cheapest way possible but it's very straightforward and easy to do. So first let me show you what you need to get. So this is the material to build one panel, this right here, and this is how easy it is to do. Um, this is poplar wood I got from Lowe's. Go to Lowe's or Home Depot, it's a half inch thick two 48 inch pieces. These are the sides of the panel, right? So we're going to have two sides like that. And the top and the bottom, this is the tricky part, top and the bottom are need to be 25 inches because the insulation that's going in there is 24 inches wide. And these need to be 25 because they're going to be the top and the bottom of the panel so it all fits in very nicely. And these are just cleats that I bought. So I just bought a uh, 10 foot stick and cut these little cleats and I'll show you why, why they're meaningful in just a minute because it's uh, the easy way of handling things. So that's it, plus the installation that's going in there, plus the material to cover it with, and we'll get into that. But um, that material right there, the poplar boards, the sides, and the, and the top and bottom, three to five dollars per board um, for the longer pieces, a little bit less than that for the shorter, and a couple bucks for the cleats. So not a big deal as far as expenses go in, but, uh, but it works out pretty well. Going back to the lumber section, we'll look at the cut lumber. I want to do as little cutting as possible, but there's no chance to do these without cutting something because they don't make the right sizes of wood. Go figure. You think they make two inch wide pieces of wood that we could use, but they don't. But it works out well because we do the three and a half, that gives us the spacer between the wall and the back of the panel. This is the section you're looking for. This stuff right here. So I've got pine, I've got poplar. Uh, poplar, I believe, is a little more expensive, but it's cut neatly, it's nice, and they have the sizes that I need. So I went with popular. Poplar. You go with pine either way. Either one works fine. So this is the stuff you're looking for right here. This is a 48 inch, 48 inch half inch piece of board. Looks like it's 4.97, so almost five bucks. A little bit cheaper for the pine, but I'm choosing popular to do mine. These are the pieces. They're a half inch and a half that we use as the cleats. You buy a 10 foot stick and you cut it up into thirds to use it as a cleat to hold the insulation in. So when you look at the pine, Pine boards the same size or 397, so 347. So you save a buck fifty by going with pine instead of poplar. Save a little bit of money, which is fine. But I don't think they had all the sizes that I need, so I just went with the poplar. So you can save a little bit of money there. Same idea with the cleats. You can do that in pine as well. This is what it would look like. So this is what it looks like when you're done. You put it together, and all I did was staple it. And some people screw it and, and put screws in there. I, I found that it. I mean, three staples in each side hold very well. I tried to tear one apart, and it's tough to get apart. So I've just got one staple, three staples in each of those in the side. So you put the box together, and you'll notice how the cleats work. The cleat is flush here, and then what it leaves is an exact two-inch gap right here. And what happens is when I now lay the insulation in, it lays on top of this cleat, and then it gives me an inch-and-a-half barrier between the wall, where this touches the wall, and the actual insulation. So it the sound has a little barrier between there and the wall, so it works out well that way. Other people will tell you, well, you can mount them two inches off the wall, so they're not really touching the wall. This gives you the, the same effect, but uh, easier to do and easier to put together that way. And this is one that's complete minus the material over the top of it, which is uh, includes the insulation. So this is the sound absorption material. This is, uh, and I'll put a link for where I got this and what this is up here. And then you'll notice back here is the inch and a half gap between where it hangs on the wall and the actual material. So that's what it looks like when it's all done. It takes just a few minutes to put them together and I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay, here we go. Put the first one together from scratch. A couple of things to note here. Again, this 48 inch board I bought from Lowe's as is, didn't have to do anything to it. The 25 inch board, they have the 24 inch board they'll sell. 
but they don't have, and the next one up is 36. So I bought the 36 inch boards for the top and bottom, had to cut them down to 25 inches so that it can, it can match perfectly. So let me show you how to put one of these together. Step one is I'm going to use a little bit of glue just to make it a little more sturdy. So I'm going to glue the top of this. Okay, box done, stapled in, sturdy enough, looks good. Now I'm going to put the cleats in. With the cleats I'm actually using an inch and a half staples and shoot them in a little sideways just so they don't go all the way through. So what I do is I just flush the edge of it with the side of the inch. I just pick a side that's going to be the back, pick a side that's going to be the front. Shoot the staples in, that's it. The other side you know, makes a nice little placeholder just to hold and this is actually everything's half inch except for these cleats which are one inch um, actually yeah they're one inch so that actually gives them more of a hold when you put the insulation in it holds it better so that's good to go let me show you how to put the insulation in and be done ready for cover so what you have here is roxul r-o-x-u-l rock board and it's the solid stuff. There's other stuff that you'll see out there in the internet people use called Safe and Sound, made by the same company. And it's not as sturdy, so it breaks up a little bit, crumbles. So people complain about that a lot. So I got the rock board, which is sound properties are pretty, pretty much similar, or maybe a little bit better for the rock board, but it's definitely easier to work with. And what you do is you just flop it down in your box that you made. It sinks right down inside. Nice and sturdy, hug it just right. There you go. There's the box, there's the backing two inches of safe place between that and the wall. And now it's ready to be covered. So there you have the majority of the work. Um, the panels are made, they're just ready to be covered in the material and they're ready to hang on the wall. Okay, we're headed back to Hobby Lobby to get the rest of the material that we need to cover the sound panels. And uh, I figured out the right stuff to get. It's really cheap. It's like $2.99 a yard. Plus, I'm going to show you on Hobby Lobby, you can go online and get a 40% off coupon. And you just buy it all in one shot, you get 40% off. So $2.99 minus 40% is just like a dollar, a little over $1.50 a yard. So it's really cheap that way. And it's almost like a, it's a black material. It's like a, it's just like a bed sheet material. It's black bed sheet looking stuff, but it looks really good when you're done with it. Um, the panels look great, so I'll show you what it looks like and, and I'll take a picture of what it is at the store in case you want to use this. There's lots of other options, but it's just a question of what you want it to look like and what material you want to use and what color and all that. So here we go to Hobby Lobby. All right, we're going into Hobby Lobby and we're about to go to that favorite place of all guys, the fabric department of Hobby Lobby, where I think this is probably where you need the most help. All right, here's the section of stuff that I'm using. It's called broad cloth. That's what I'm getting. There we go. Black, made in China, of course, broadcloth, 45 inches wide, and then we're gonna order enough feet or yards to do what we need. It's $2.99 a yard, minus 40%. Okay, so Hobby Lobby's done, and for 26 bucks, I got enough material to cover eight panels. So I got five, 60 inches tall, and it's it comes 40 or 30 wide or whatever, so the width doesn't matter because the, pan the panel's only 25 inches wide, so it's plenty wide, but then you just gotta buy it long enough to cover the top. And I do a 60 inch per panel, that leaves it a little excess so I can cut it off. 26 bucks for all the material. Okay, now to cover these puppies up, uh, we're gonna do two things. Uh, this is the back that we don't care that much about, so we're gonna just cover the back with a piece of fabric, just put a square piece on the back, staple it on, be done with that. And then we flip it over and put it face down on the fabric that we want to look good. And then we wrap it around, pull it tight, and staple it all the way around. And then we've got a completely enclosed um, black fabric covered sound absorption panel. So here's how we do that. Here's the fabric that we bought at Hobby Lobby. And you'll see it's, it just kind of feels like a sheet, a black sheet, bed sheet. But it's good material. It's perfect for covering these up and they make it look really good. 
So a couple of sizes. Back piece of fabric, this thing's 48 inches tall. Um, actually 49 inches tall with the wood thickness. So I'll cut about 50 inches, 51 inches or so, just so you got enough and then cut off the excess. And then uh, that's for the back, but on the front, when you do it on the front side and wrap it around, you're gonna need uh, about 60 inches. That way you got enough to wrap around, staple it, and take the excess off. back looks good fine doesn't have to look fancy because it's not going to you're not going to see it anyway we're going to cover it all up with the front side So the corners are the tricky pieces where you want to do it kind of like a Christmas present. You're going to tuck this piece in and take this top and bottom piece and fold them straight up as tight as you can get them without any crease and just a little teeny crease right on the corner. So it's just a little tricky but it's like doing a present really tight. step of making it, cut off the excess, and then the only thing left to do is to get one of the wire hangers, screw it in on both sides here, and let the wire hang down so I can hang it on the wall. Done! Panel complete. 